Now, these sort of whirlwind trips, meetings between leaders over dinner, over, I think it was pork belly last night, do they matter or is the hard work really being done behind closed doors by officials? Yeah, they matter. And so does the hard work behind closed doors by, by officials. I mean, before the British election, it was a pretty abrasive period of relationships between Britain and the rest of their partners in the EU. David Cameron tried to block Juncker. It was all pretty nasty and there were some bruises left on the continent. Now I think it is very necessary for the Prime Minister to go and visit everybody and start to say to them, these are the kind of things we want, but these are the things we need to work together on because they're for the greater good of the European Union. Meanwhile, the worker bees, or the worker ants, <laughs> down below in the diplomatic engine room are doing the, the hard stuff. I mean, he has got a bit of a problem, though, because on one level, as you say, he wants these European leaders to sort of do him, do him a favour, or at least be understanding towards him. And yet, a lot of the rhetoric here has to be Brussels bashing to a certain extent. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is the dilemma for him. And it's going to be the ultimate dilemma if and when he comes back with a package which may be quite generous in EU terms that may not be enough to satisfy those on the, on the right wing of the party. And that is why he has to use every skill he has as a politician to square that circle. Now, realistically, there are a lot of deadlines here. There are German and French elections in 2017. There's also David Cameron's... Uh, deadline of the end of 2017 and there's talk of treaty change. Could the European Union possibly change its treaties this well, side of 2017 in two years? This is, I mean, this, is, this is the really interesting question and there are a million ways as you know Adam to skin the cat inside the EU. If we go for full bore, uh, full Monty head on uh, treaty change involving a ratification procedure that has to take in 28 governments and some parliaments, including possibly some referendums, there is no way he will be able to return to Britain with a deal by the end of 2017, still less than 2016. But there are ways of dicing and slicing treaty change, the sort of lesser treaty change, or political commitments, there are all kinds of ingenious ways in which you can do this and meet the rather tight deadline that David Cameron faces. The German leader and the French, uh, the German and French leaders won't welcome having to deal with this in the year of uh, difficult elections for both of them. So you can see the political imperative to try and do this in 2016. But if that is to work, it's not just a question of getting a deal. If it involves treaty change, it's got to be in a nuanced way that doesn't involve this whole... Full treaty change. As well. yeah. You can call it whatever you like. 